Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. Uh, we did see something happen at the federal level uh, recently that I wanted to touch on uh, to do that with us. You saw him on Fox News talking about this very thing. We've got uh, from Michelle and Associates, Costas Maros. Costas, thank you for coming on. Kevin, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be on. Absolutely. So um, I, I was hoping, Costas, that you could take us through uh, the interview that you had on Fox News. Uh, what we're talking about here is uh, the Biden administration working with the CDC to remove, uh, what was it, defensive handgun uses, the, the statistics that we so frequently cite, not on this channel, but you can see on a lot of other channels. So could you walk us through that? Yeah. So uh, going a little before the Fox News interview, what happened was last year, I noticed that the CDC website, partially because websites like the Trace and Anti-Gun website funded by Michael Bloomberg were bragging about it. But I noticed that the CDC website had removed statistics that, had, that it had referenced for years. Uh, the statistics simply noted that uh, although surveys of defensive gun use vary, they range from around 100,000, I think it was on the low end, maybe 80,000, something like that for the government survey, all the way up to 2.5 million per year from um, uh, Mr. Gary Kleck's study back in the 1990s. And there's surveys between that range too. It was just telling you the low end and the high end. It was relatively uncontroversial for most people because it didn't really take a position and say one end or the other was right. It was just giving the public a range of uh, numbers for where defensive gun use may fall. Uh, but of course, the anti-gun side didn't love that because it goes against their whole narrative. Because if if people frequently defend themselves using firearms, using handguns, then that at least is some counterweight to the negative side we always see in the media about guns used in crime. Um, so I filed a Freedom of Information Act request to the CDC just to find out why they did this? Like, was this the product of any new research? You know, did they have a giant meeting with all sides and conclude we should remove this survey data? What the FOIA request revealed, of course, was that this was actually the product of a months long lobbying effort by gun control activists. Um, and they didn't communicate with anyone on uh, to get an alternative view, not even to pretend to get an alternative view. Um, so, they go, went ahead and stealth edited their website, removed that reference, and now just says something, I, I forget exactly, but it says something like, oh, we need further research to find out how much defensive gun use happens. So anyway, that story broke. I, I sent the FOIA documents to Stephen Gutowski of The Reload, and then I was contacted by, uh, the after the story broke, I was contacted by Fox News to uh, appear on Laura Ingram's show. Um, so that's how that came about. <laughs> so, I mean... I just just curious because I, I mean I do have the ultimate question here is uh, do any of us care um, should any of us care uh, that that you know some numbers on a website are no longer there but does the CDC have any obligation to you know do some sort of announcement that we're not gonna have this on the website anymore or is that just kind of a private thing they can do whatever they want uh, you I shouldn't comment directly on whether the CDC what they must do legally, because I'm not an expert in administrative law, it may be the case that they should have called some sort of uh, public notice period for this. But uh, what I will say is that setting aside the legality for a second, what the CDC has to do is maintain trust with the public. And by doing this, they're showing that at least for when it comes to people on the program side, they don't deserve trust because they are clearly not even seeking out our take before making a change. Uh, you know, they, they could have, you know, gotten a token, even a token opinion from somebody like Gary Kleck, you know, uh, researchers that think there are a high amount of defensive gun uses and they didn't. So regardless of whether the CDC could legally have done it or not, they clearly, uh, from, from just a public trust standpoint, they should have been more transparent about how this uh, came about. Now, why you should care is because the CDC is a large government organization with heavy funding and uh, activists for years have been insisting that the CDC do uh, more gun control research. And when they say that, they mean, you know, they want the CDC to advocate for gun control. Let's not, let's not beat around the bush. That's the end result of that. Um, so that's why you should care because you never want a giant, well-funded 
uh, government agency hostile to your rights. We already have the ATF. We don't need another one, you know, also antagonizing us. Right. I, you know, but is, is it is it literally just a uh, a conversation across the dinner table kind of thing? I mean, I, I've made a video recently uh, where I did talk just a little bit about, you know, why don't why don't people come after CCW holders as much as they go after individual things uh, like assault weapons or or whatever? And I think the conclusion ultimately that I came to is that it's harder. You know, you, you have a lot of good statistics surrounding things like CCWs. Um, this doesn't necessarily directly apply to CCWs because there are, there are some states that don't require them. This is just uh, um, defensive handgun uses, right? But um, are these statistics used anywhere? I mean, are they used in lawsuits or, or is it literally just about transparency uh, with with a with a government agency and having trust from the public, they can be used in lawsuits, especially in the pre Bruin era, where um, you know, the judges could take you know, a balancing of harms approach. Uh, and there, by showing, I've cited in lawsuits, for example, um, how how law abiding, exceptionally law abiding people with carry permits are. That's not the same as defensive gun uses, but you know, it's something we've cited before. But when it comes to the number of defensive gun uses in the post Bruin era, at least on paper, judges aren't supposed to consider, you know, this interest balancing approach where you say, well, there's this, these public safety interests for the government and these safety interests for the individual. Um, so hopefully it won't be relevant for those purposes and it will just be relevant for, you know, uh, from something from the perspective of government trust uh, with the CDC. Well, yeah, and then and then what does the end goal end up being? I mean, you know, we we see we see a lot of things these days like definitions change, uh, whether it be um, you know the definition of a woman or you know just the fabrication of this word that we call uh, assault weapons, and then changing the definition of that to be more and more inclusive. Is this like a cultural thing that you see? Let's go ahead and wipe these statistics from the CDC. People will stop using them because they won't know if they're factual. Uh, that way we can't raise the next generation of people understanding that there is intrinsic value in carrying a firearm. We're gonna continue pounding, hey, firearms kill people, kill people, kill people, and then nothing to rebut that saying, hey, firearms save lives, because ultimately that's what this statistic shows, right? You know, you have between 100,000 and 2.5 million lives potentially saved every single year uh, because of firearms. That decreases the intrinsic value. I'm just curious, do you see this being more of an attempt to culturally shift the country away from firearms? That, no, that's exactly what it is. You know, it, while it doesn't uh, probably won't end up being relevant to any uh, lawsuits, Second Amendment lawsuits. I don't know if anyone wants to sue the CDC over the tra their transparency, but while it won't be relevant to any Second Amendment lawsuits, I, I don't believe, it's hugely relevant to the cultural war. Now, I can't comment on those other definitional changes you talked about that's above my pay grade, but when it comes to defensive gun uses, I mean, the emails in, that the FOIA request revealed were very clear. You had uh, uh, Mark Bryant from the uh, famous for running the gun violence archive, which changed the definition of mass shooting. So when you hear, you know, them talk about over 600 mass shootings a year, it's because of their uh, expanded definition. In his emails to the CDC, he was very clear that the reason uh, the, the defensive gun use statistics on the CDC's website bother him is because they stopped gun control legislation. He said people would cite these uh, statistics as a reason not to pass gun control legislation. So this is a culture war. Um, they don't like the fact that guns are ever portrayed in a positive light. You know, again, they would prefer that all people ever see are, you know, the, a horrific mass shooting or, you know, somebody getting uh, on their local news, somebody got mugged with some armed, because of some armed lunatic or something. They don't want you to ever associate guns with anything positive. So this is a huge cultural war. And, you know, an edit to a website might not seem important in a vacuum to people, um, but it's the process by which it came about that tells you everything you need to know about which side your government is on here. That's what's important. Well, yeah, and I, I guess that makes upcoming elections all the more important. I guess that also makes, you know, 
having the these <laughs> these constitutional rights on the forefront of our mind as we continue to raise our children. Costas, I want to thank you very much for coming on and sharing with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for having me. And you know, some other statistics that can have some weight in the near future is likes, shares, and subscribes to this channel. So please, if you got a second and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like and share these videos. We're trying to get the algorithms to help us out. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers. So please go ahead and hit those buttons. It really helps get this information out to as many people as possible. I want to thank you guys again, and we'll see you on the next one.